Welcome to a mini book review by the Gear Tester. Outdoor Survival Skills by Larry Dean Olson has been a book that has been precious to me, has been important to me since I was a child. My best friend owned a copy of this book. It might have been the fifth edition uh, when I was growing up. And we spent many days after school and many summer afternoons seeking to copy and to hone the skills and uh, techniques that are documented by Larry Dean Olson in this excellent uh, outdoor survival skills book. Now, this book is important because it lays out some of the, or, or, or many, maybe even most, of the techniques that you would need for outdoor survival uh, or wilderness reliance. Uh, Larry Dean Olson isn't as much concerned with emergency situations as he is going out and living in the wilderness for an extended period of time, many months, using uh, what nature has to offer you and, and, th and uh, constructing tools and traps and gathering food and storing that food and building shelter. So this book is not, is not just for emergency survival skills, but it really talks about what, what many people now refer to as wilderness reliance, living in the wilderness as uh, native cultures have for many centuries. Uh, this book has a number of different chapters in it. Uh, different chapters talking about uh, different philosophies and ideals and techniques for surviving in the wilderness, uh, for thriving in the wilderness. And much of it is in a story form. You can see here it has black and white photos of different uh, survival shelters or wilderness uh, sh shelters. Here's a little story uh, that uh, Larry Dean Olson talks about when uh, he manufactured a uh, wiki up. Uh, which is kind of a, a shelter similar to a teepee, but doesn't use animal skins uh, for the covering. It uses uh, plant material. So you can see here lots of nice photos uh, and discusses uh, different things about the shelter, using rock shelters, using caves, different ways to heat the ground um, as you're camping or as you're laying out in, in the woods trying to stay warm on cool nights. You can see here he's got an entire section on fire using flint and steel, using the bow drill. Uh, these are techniques now that you can just click around on the internet and find videos of people doing, but I didn't have that information readily available to me when I was 13, 14, 15 years old. And so this book was kind of the channel through which I learned and uh, enjoyed uh, wilderness uh, survival and outdoor skills, gathering water, different techniques, many of which are, are popular or, or well-known, uh, the different harvesting and using of different uh, plant materials and how to store uh, food, meat, nuts. He's got a section here on different, in the center of the book, different edible and non-edible plants and how you use them for medicine or food or uh, different things. He's got a whole section here in the book on traps different kinds of traps and we spent many afternoons seeking to duplicate these traps and then quickly coming around in the morning to see if we had captured something as as a young kids. Now, this book was endlessly entertaining for me and my friends. I actually recently purchased this one about five years ago and I've enjoyed rereading uh, the book because I didn't keep that book. My best friend kept it because it was his. Different ways to trap a uh, water life, fish, uh, ways to make arrowheads and other uh, stone tools and how to uh, manufacture bone tools, how to shape them and grind them and use them for making clothing or even weapons. There's a whole section here on manufacturing bows and uh, I actually did that and uh, I actually have saved a number of the arrows. He's got a whole section here on manufacturing arrows and how you uh, fletch the arrows, how you put the feathers, which is called fletching or veins, onto a wooden arrow shaft. And I have a couple arrows here. Put the book away for a second. Uh, here are a number of arrows that I manufactured many years ago. These two I, I manufactured. Now these two are younger than these three here. I made these arrows on vacation with my parents uh, on the coast of Washington a number of years ago. 
These were actually made out of driftwood. I only could find pieces that were about this long. So I had to half the shafts together and I reinforced the back, the knock portion. I've always enjoyed archery. Uh, since I was about eight years old, my dad purchased me my first bow. So I wanted to be able to manufacture arrows in the wilderness. You can see here I used a little piece of shell. I don't think I ever fired this arrow. I just kind of made it as fun on the beach just to keep my skills sharpened up. These are seagull feathers there. This is another one of those driftwood arrows. This one's probably thicker. I may have fired this one a couple times. It seems to have a little bit more wear on it. You can see here I'm being very particular about the feathers. Uh, again, I believe these are seagull feathers. Again, I hafted the, the shaft together because I did not have a long enough piece of wood to use. And this is probably a little bit better uh, tip there out of a piece of shell again. These three arrows I made many, many years ago. Uh, it's amazing how the years go by. I used turkey feathers, and I didn't fletch these perfectly. Uh, Larry Dean Olson would probably be uh, very shocked at the way that I made these arrows. Uh, but these are better shafts. These are out of uh, little saplings that I may, uh, cut down and then allowed to dry. You can see there, I believe those are turkey feathers. The knock there again, carefully made. This one I fired enough, the little stone tip that I made uh, fell out and there's just dirt in that. That one there, these two arrows are in a little bit better condition. This one has three uh, fletchings there on it and actually has a little bit of a stone tip there on it that I kind of ground into the shape of an arrowhead. And I fired this arrow many times, these two arrows quite a bit. Now you can see another little stone tip there that has uh, some, some wear on it. But uh, I really enjoyed uh, the, the section of the outdoor wilderness uh, survival, outdoor survival skills here uh, by Larry Dean Olson on arrows and on fletching and how you do the veins. Uh, really enjoyed those those sections and got a lot of time and and energy uh, dedicated to those sections. I've made uh, three individual bows, probably around the, the weight of about 20 pounds. That's not a very heavy bow, uh, the draw length, uh, but those bows actually functioned. And I fired hundreds of arrows, uh, shot the same arrows, but probably hundreds of times out of those bows and they functioned very, very well. Um, here you have a whole section on uh, skinning and tanning animals and making tools uh, that you would need for that. Uh, and then in the, in the last section of the book has a bunch of the, the, the different plants that are mentioned in the center of this book uh, and talks about whether they're edible and different things. Right here in the back are, are pictures of those plants. So it's nice to have a hard copy resource where you can look. You could take this out, throw it in a bag, take it on a backpacking trip or just a day hike and uh, use it as a reference material or as a resource as you're out backpacking or camping. Uh, this is a great book and I would definitely recommend it to you. Here are some knives that I used to manufacture those arrows and that I treasured as a child. Uh, this is uh, one here. This is a case butcher's knife. I'll zoom in on that. Uh, this is purchased for me by my mom at a garage sale. I begged for this knife. I resharpened it carefully and carried it on my belt for many, many years. Uh, it was a high carbon blade, and I knew that that was something uh, high carbon that was discussed in uh, Larry Dean Olson's Outdoor Survival Skills. And so I, I wanted it, and I have treasured this knife, and I have kept it, and, uh, and will continue to do that. Here is another knife, uh, another little kitchen knife. I made this little leather sheath. This leather sheath, I, um, I after I threw one of my throwing knives and lost the throwing knife, I repurposed that sheath for uh, the, the case butcher's knife. But here is a little kitchen knife that I used as a neck knife hung around my neck. Again, high carbon steel. I was looking for that and I have uh, tried to start fires with this knife when I was a young man and enjoyed using it and used it to manufacture many of those arrows, scrape the shafts and many of those bows that I made over the years. Here's another knife that I have uh, saved and has been precious to me and that my, my love of outdoor survival skills uh, were honed by reading uh, Larry Dean Olson's Outdoor Survival Skills. This is a uh, kukri knife uh, manufactured in Nepal and purchased for me by a friend of my family's and brought back. My mom uh, and dad paid the individual quite a bit of money and he brought back five uh, or four or five of these knives for me and I've treasured this one here and this one has chopped down many many trees 
and uh, manufactured and been used to scrape and branches and made many debris huts and forts over the years and has seen much work and it has since been retired and is just something that I treasure as part of my childhood. I would uh, definitely encourage you, if you've got young people in your life, uh, to purchase them this book. And maybe you'll purchase yourself a copy and use it as a resource uh, for outdoor survival skill or skills. Uh, definitely a book I would recommend to you. I'm going to be continuing to produce uh, short book reviews on uh, books that I find interesting that I hope you, my viewers, will find interesting. My goal is to produce quality video reviews of camping, uh, shooting, and survival gear. If you like this video, I would encourage you to subscribe to my channel. I have a number of other videos on different products uh, that I like and that I use on a regular basis on my channel. Thank you so much for your views and your subscriptions. This is the Gear Tester signing off.